He says, But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. Where does the anointing abide? In you. All right? So it doesn't abide out floating around. Right? So it's not going to fall on you. Right? Not going to. Now, see, it is amazing because you only read, well, you read about it falling in the book of Acts on people that had never gotten it before. Right? The Holy Spirit fell on them at the day of Pentecost. They fell on, on them in Cornelius as he did on us at the beginning. And it talks about it. But it's always an initial instance. Jesus said that if you get this spirit that I'm talking about, I'm quoting him, all right? He said, this in you, this living water in you will be a well of water, a spring of a well of water, what it says, springing up in you, right? So where does the Holy Spirit come from? Initially, he comes upon you. Yes, he comes into you. He, you just like you. You get a new house, you got to move in. Right? You're moving in. But when you, now, you live there. So, you're not, understand this. When you live there, you come out from there. Anytime you're out of there, you're away from there. Right? It's not a matter of, you've got to come back in to the degree that, oh, I've never been here before, and, and, and I've got to move more stuff in. You, move, you live there, and anytime you're outside, you go back inside to come out again. Right? Is this making sense to you? The Spirit of God dwells in you. He does not dwell outside you. Now, He dwells in each individual believer. So in that sense, He's outside of you. But He lives in you. He dwells in you. He, so He's not... The way the Spirit works is that He flows up out of you. Out of your... He says, I will pour out of my Spirit. He didn't say, I will pour out my Spirit. Right? He said, I will pour out of my Spirit. Well, where is His Spirit? In you. Where is he going to pour out of his spirit from? Out of you, out into the world. Right? This is, this is extremely simple, but it's our viewpoint that we have uh, clouded up. And we always think that we've got to pray and beg and ask him to fall and all this kind of stuff. When there are clear scriptures that says that righteousness, which is by faith, does not say who will ascend to pull him down or bring him down, or who will descend to bring him up. It says, no, the righteousness which is by faith speaks like this. The, it's the word of faith which is nigh thee, even in your heart and in your mouth, the word of faith which we preach. Right? He said, look, if you want to know what right... Okay, I'm glad we didn't erase all of this yet. Right? Unskillful in the word of righteousness. Right? The, the faith which is by righteousness talks like this. It, what it does not say, it doesn't say, oh, we got to bring him down. Oh, we got to bring him up. Oh, you know, no. Righteousness, which is by faith. When you understand righteousness, you're saying, you know what? He's here. It's in your mouth. It's, you speak. You command. You tell what to do. And it's not a matter of him falling. It, it's a matter of the Spirit of God living in you and flowing up out of his Spirit to touch others. So, I, I, you've got to get, this is the essence of everything we do. Right? This is, we start... We start where most people try to get. Right? We start from the complete work of Christ. When Jesus said it's finished, he meant it. He did the work. Now, in us, when he comes into you, you are complete in him. Right? That means you lack nothing. Now, whether you're walking in all that or not, that's another story. Right? That's our job here is to get you walking in it. Now, 